And we were chatting through email over the last couple of weeks. We had you in the day after this earthquake happened. And yeah. you were saying that everything you were finding was that this was one of the largest earthquakes in about 100 years. Yes. Now, as I get your microphone back up and going, there you go, Matt. Please Thank tell you. us, why is this one of the biggest? Yeah, so this happened in a place called a subduction zone where we usually see these giant earthquakes. And the size of an earthquake depends on how far the two sides of the fault move past each other, but also the area of the fault that okay. breaks. And subduction zones can just have huge, huge areas. So this earthquake was something like 400 kilometers, 250 miles long. This is a huge, huge earthquake. Yeah. Um, and so when we look at it, when we compare it to these other historical events, this is anywhere between sort of the top five to eight earthquake in terms of size all time, or since we've been recording earthquakes. Right, which goes back to about 1900. About so 1900. 125 years. Yes. This was number seven when we were first talking about yes. it. And I loved reading your study last night. You said there's actually a problem with this being yeah. so large. Why yeah. is that? So in 1952, there was an earthquake that hit in exactly the same place. It broke oh. almost exactly the same part of the fault offshore of Kamchatka. And we say, okay, well, earthquakes can happen in the same place. The San Andreas has earthquakes in the same place sometimes. But to build up to a giant earthquake, magnitude 9 in 1952, back up to an 8.8, .8, we actually need to take some time to do that. Usually it takes centuries, sometimes even thousands of years to do that. Yeah. This happened in 73 years. Yeah. And the problem is it's hard to do that. I mean, yeah. literally, things aren't moving fast enough to build up to this 8.8. .8. So the question is, what exactly happened in 52? What exactly happened this time? And trying to figure out if it's something we don't understand or it's something that sort of fits in with the way we understand earthquakes already. Just amazing. And we're talking about subduction. This is when the plate is going under the other plate. Exactly. So it's more of a scrape versus where San Andreas kind of pushes against side to side. The basic earthquake physics are about the same in both cases. Okay. The key with a subduction zone is because the fault, instead of being straight up and down, is tilted, yes. more of that fault can have earthquakes. Okay. Um, so there's more area that can have these big earthquakes. Uh, but really the big difference is just this area allows it to be enormous compared to San Andreas earthquakes, which can, which can only be up to an eight. Right, <laughs> just fascinating. And then I love this image that you sent to us. That was your backyard seismometer. Yes, I yes. have a backyard weather station and yeah. you have a backyard yeah. seismometer. But this was a massive earthquake in Russia across the entire Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And you picked it up here in town? Yeah, 4,000 miles away. Wow. Uh, my backyard was shaking. Uh, it measures uh, how the ground moves in terms of a velocity. It was so something like 15 or 20 micrometers per second. So we're talking about really, really small shaking that I can detect. My backyard was shaking when I look at that seismogram for like two hours wow. after this earthquake. And so uh, 4,000 miles away, shaking like crazy in my backyard. Oh, just amazing. And we're running out of time, but we had to yeah. talk about the tsunami as well, yes. because an earthquake 4,000 miles away, we felt the tremble here, according to your instruments. Yes. But we were so concerned about the ocean. NOAA releasing this map showing us how those waves traveled across the Pacific to our shore here. And that's something you were watching also as a local expert. Absolutely. The tsunami can be so much more dangerous than the earthquake itself. The earthquake yeah. shakes nearby, but the tsunami, especially these big ones, can cross the entire ocean. So Hawaii is always on alert for tsunami. California coasts are always on the alert for tsunamis that happen anywhere in the Pacific Ocean. That's so amazing. So I am fascinated by this. You can read Doc, uh, Matt's entire study along with your collaborators at the USGS. Is there also like classes that you teach in town? I would love to I just do. sit and learn from you. Yeah, so I teach a bunch of uh, classes at Cal State Bakersfield. Some are on natural disasters, some are on geophysics, some are on tectonics, yes. some are on earthquakes. So um, it's not maybe just to sit in, but you can certainly sign up and you can always email me if you have questions. Just fantastic. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for stopping by Thank again. Thank you for having me.